Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the KPPC Kuwait Public Policy Center's flagship lecture series program. Today, we have a very special guest from the French National Audit Office and a very interesting topic for tonight. The reform of welfare in France, the case of the retirement pension system. As uh, Dr. Khaled just mentioned, this is a very hot topic in the Kuwaiti context and we await with eager minds to relish such an opportunity to take in vital information from someone with such great experience and knowledge in the field. Without any further ado, allow me to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Jean-Pierre Viola. Mr. Viola is a senior auditor of the French National Audit Office. He currently heads the social security section of the sixth chamber of the French National Audit Office. A former alumnus of Institut d'études politiques de Paris and École nationale d'administration, he exercised important responsibilities as a member of the private office of the French Minister for Culture and Communication. He has taught public finances for several years at Institut d'études uh, politique de Paris. Within the sixth division in the French National Audit Office, Mr. Viola manages a unit of 30 staff. This unit assesses whether the financial statements of Social Security provide a true and fair view of its assets and liabilities, financial position and results of its operations for the year ended. It also analyzes the financial prospects of social security and appraises the efficiency of the entities that pay social benefits and collect social contributions. Um, and it is to my, to my delight uh, that before commencing the lecture, um, to pass the mic to His Excellency Dr. Khaled Mehdi, Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Planning and Development, for a short introductory remark. The floor is yours, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, Mbarak, and I would like first to thank the French Embassy for organizing uh, the, the, uh, this lecture. And I would like to thank uh, Mr. Jean-Pierre Viola for being with us today uh, with his very impressive experience in, in the French pension system. I would like just to shed the light that you are currently uh, having a big issue in the discussion of the Kuwait pen pension system uh, with regard uh, of giving out profits uh, uh, of the investment that being uh, created in the fund and the pension fund, which is very weird a request from National Assembly to push for uh, giving a profit out of the pension fund for the retire, a retiree and uh, on the expenses of the subscriber, which is very interesting. But that discussion, it took really uh, the country, the whole country uh, being in full discussion with regard to this issue. Part of a give and take on this regard. There was some proposed law modification uh, being presented by the Minister of Finance and his team in the Public Institute for the uh, Social Security uh, Fund. I want to mention that uh, BIFFS, B-I-F-F-S, uh, the Kuwait Pension uh, Fund organization, this was one of the first to be established in the whole region. Uh, it was being uh, built to protect the uh, retirement process in the country. Uh, it goes without saying there are issues with regard to the sustainability of pension fund, which is we consider uh, similar to many global pension funds around the world. It's not something that uh, only Kuwait has issues and challenges with. Today, as we are uh, Listening uh, to you shortly, uh, Mr. Jean-Pierre, uh, please shed the light on the French system. We would like to understand challenges, your ways on tackling them, 
as the Kuwait Public Policy Center lecture series focus on the international experience and you led the policy making uh, uh, for the local in Kuwait. Uh, we have this motto in KBBC, it said, think global, act local, which is the way that we are uh, proceeding and the way uh, we are working in the Kuwait Public Policy uh, lecture series and in the center. Again, I would like to thank you for accepting our invitation to join us and the French Embassy for their uh, work and their uh, enthusiasm to get this lecture working. We hope next time to get the speakers to be hosted by us face to face in Kuwait. Today, I had the chance also to meet with Anna. Uh, the group from Anna visited my office with regarding to the public reform. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Her Excellency, the French ambassador and the French, uh, the French embassy staff for doing all the best uh, for uh, keeping this cooperation and collaboration uh, between uh, the General Secretary of the Supreme Council of Planning and the French Ambassador. Thank you very much and over to you, Mr. Mpal. Thank you very much, sir. I, I am also very pleased and honored to address your assembly in order to discuss the French retirement pension system, uh, the reforms that have been made and the challenges it is still facing. And I would like to thank beforehand his Excellency Dr. Raled Madi, as well as uh, Mr. Meshari bin Hassan and Mr. Mubarak Al Sabah. Um, I would also like to thank Mrs. Claire Le Flecher, uh, France's ambassador to Kuwait, and Mr. Bruno Zongalini, the economic counselor at the French embassy. Um, and you kindly invited me uh, this, uh, this late afternoon for this uh, lecture. I will uh, address successively four issues, if you agree. Um, the first one will be where France stands in terms of public expenditure uh, related to retirement pensions. The second will be uh, the complexity of France's retirement pension system and its effect, and uh, the structural imbalance of our um, system. The third will be the, the reforms that have been applied in order to correct this uh, imbalance and reforms which have been uh, very successful uh, in some ways. Uh, but, um, and that will be the, the fourth topic. Um, our system still faces uh, a structural uh, imbalance and the structural uh, financial imbalance uh, will require uh, new decisions. Um, first of all, I will, um, I will start with, uh, if you agree, uh, an overview of our retirement pensions uh, system. Um, just to say that it is um, obviously a major component of the welfare state, uh, which was created after World War II, uh, and of public expenditure uh, as a whole. Uh, indeed, um, the French welfare state provides a vast array of social benefits, um, the first being the reimbursement of health costs, because on average, social security covers 80% of total health costs. Uh, and there, there is also a wide range of benefits um, whose purpose is to supplement um, or make up for the loss of work earnings. That is family benefits, housing benefits, uh, sickness, maternity, paternity, uh, allowances, disability pensions, um, allowances and pensions for work hazards, uh, unemployment benefits, also a, a poverty safety net, and of course, um, the retirement uh, pensions, which is the, the, the subject of, of today. Um, in all, public expenditure uh, in France makes up around 50% of GDP, which makes France one of the top OECD and uh, European Union countries in terms of uh, public expenditure. And as you may see uh, in page number three, social uh, expenditure um, makes up around 30% of GDP, 
and a retirement pensions, um, almost 14%. Um, what you see on, on the right is the, the effect of the, uh, the COVID crisis, which has led to, um, uh, to a, a recession in 2020, which has been made up in 2021, because we have uh, more or less uh, uh, recovered. And thus, um, retirement pensions make up a fourth of total public expenditure. In the long run, um, what you see is, is that a, a steady um, increase of social expenditure and retirement pensions uh, in relation to GDP. Um, though you can see also uh, before 2020 uh, that they plateaued, uh, in fact, uh, since the last decade, that is not the, the result of a uh, spontaneous um, move of or change of things, but it is owing to, to reforms I will, uh, I will get into. Um, France has a much higher share of retain, retirement benefits in relation to GDP than most OECD or EU countries, and you will see that in page four. The next, the next page, if you, if you can, but thank you very much. Um, and, and you see that we have uh, uh, only um, Italy is uh, uh, beyond us, but the, the, the French share is higher uh, than in, in, other, in other countries. And it is a, a share which is um, almost entirely public, whereas in other countries, the, the private sector has, uh, has a greater share. And uh, this high share of um, expenditure um, is the, the result of, of two main factors. Um, the first one, of course, is, is a demographic one, which is that uh, retired people uh, make, a, make up a sizable share of the French population as a whole. Um, in 2019, there were almost uh, 70 million of retired people, retired people out of a total population of 60 million inhabitants. And between 2004 and 2019, this number has increased by 4 million, as shown is the next page, page five, please. Um, and this is, this is a tremendous change, which has occurred uh, in less than in, in, 15, uh, in 15 years. The, the, second, um, the second reason why we have this uh, great share of uh, retirement pensions expenditure is that um, our pension systems system is generous, at least on average. Um, in 2019, the average standard of living of retired people was 3% above that of the general population. In general, this is, these are two averages, obviously. Um, but it means that this is 15 points more than in the United Kingdom, Sweden or the Netherlands, and 10 more than in Germany. Um, another aspect of, of uh, its social results, uh, of the social results of uh, our system is that the, the poverty rate of uh, retired people is much lower than that of the French population as a whole. This is 8.7% against uh, versus 14.8% uh, in 2018. And this poverty rate of retired people, so less than 9%, is also lower than the poverty rate for retired people in most other developed countries. I will get to the, to the second point, which is um, the fact that we have a, a complex system uh, and a system which is um, uh, beset with a, a structural imbalance. Uh, well, I will go quite uh, fast on the, the complexity of our system because I think it is not matched by, by yours. Um, in fact, um, the complexity of our system stems from the fact that uh, um, some of it predated uh, World War II and, and some social groups have always uh, resisted be, being uh, merged with other professions. Um, in all, uh, in France, we have uh, between 30 and 40 
different uh, compulsory um, uh, schemes for, for retirement. Um, and uh, those, uh, those uh, schemes, however, are, are based on uh, same principles, um, a principle of uh, distribution, that is that the contributions from those uh, at work pay pensions uh, and give them entitlements for their future pensions. Uh, it is a pay-as-you-go uh, system. Um, it, this implies that this uh, pay-as-you-go financing system is, is based on trust and solidarity between generations. Uh, the youngest agree to finance the retirement of the elderly because they anticipate that in turn, uh, the generations that will follow, that will follow them, will do the, the, the same. Um, the, there have been plans in order to, most recently, in order to merge um, all those different schemes um, in, in one system. Um, that was one of the reforms which was put forward by the incumbent uh, president, uh, Emmanuel Macron. Um, but this reform was, uh, was dropped uh, because of uh, uh, the COVID um, epidemic and the fact that there were other uh, public priorities. It should be noted that uh, it was, however, um, met with a stiff, uh, stiff resistance, um, especially on, on the part of um, the, the social uh, categories um, for whom uh, the pensions might be lower, might have been lower as a result of the reform, or their contributions might have been uh, higher. This um, segmentation of, um, of our um, retirement system has mixed um, effects on the control of, of expenditure. Um, as, you, as you may have noted, our system is a two-tier uh, two uh, system. A, a first tier, which is really controlled by the, the French uh, state in all aspects, and a second tier, where uh, the representatives of uh, the social groups, that is uh, uh, employers, uh, employees, uh, uh, self-employed uh, people, ha have a greater say uh, in, in the way they are, they are managed. And I must say, have uh, uh, taken, undertaken their, their responsibility in uh, balancing their own schemes um, by taking sometimes tough uh, decisions. Um, this second tier um, provides, um, I would say, greater flexibility uh, in that respect than the, than the first tier. Um, one of the difficulties of the, of one of the major difficulties of the first tier, um, beyond that it is not uh, unified, is that it, it, it is not totally transparent. Uh, indeed, for most schemes, there, there exist special funds um, in which um, are located, uh, obviously, the, uh, the expenditure of uh, pensions uh, as well as the, contribu the contributions. But such a special fund does not exist uh, for one of the main uh, schemes, uh, which is that of uh, uh, the French state civil servants. Um, in fact, the, the French state um, balances um, from a financial standpoint uh, the expenditure uh, related to uh, pensions to state civil servants by um, any uh, by any amount of uh, of tax without a proper identification of social of a social contribution coming from the french state as um, an employer um, and as a result, the fact that the implicit contribution of the French state to the financing to the financing of its own system is higher than the contributions of uh, private sector employees to the system uh, for uh, employees is uh, is concealed. Um, beyond that, um, most schemes face um, a structural uh, imbalance. 
Um, and that structural um, imbalance um, has um, appeared, I would say, has been uh, uh, most uh, blatant uh, for the past 15 to, uh, uh, to 20 years. And this structural imbalance has resulted in huge deficits. Um, unlike the deficit of the French state, uh, the deficits of uh, social security in France, that is not only uh, retirement pensions, but um, health uh, expenditures uh, as well, uh, health expenditure as well, are paid back, uh, paid, paid, paid back by a social debt uh, amortization fund. Um, this fund is financed by special contributions levied on all sources of uh, income, um, income of individuals, um, be it from uh, uh, salaries, from uh, capital gains, from uh, uh, pensions or, or, or whatever. The date of redemption has however been pushed back and uh, this amortization scheme does not include uh, the part of the deficit of the French state, which could be attributed to uh, uh, its servant system of uh, pensions for its uh, civil servants. The, the whole uh, structural uh, imbalance of the French pension system has three main res reasons. Uh, the first is a demographic uh, shift. From 2005 uh, onwards, baby boomers have gone into retirement whilst less numerous younger generations have got into employment. And you can see that in, uh, in page seven. And as a result, uh, the ratios between working age people um, who contribute who, or who could contribute to the system and retired people have sharply deteriorated, especially in recent years. Moreover, um, and this is a, a second uh, aspect which should be stressed. The life, the life expectancy of old people has increased, which is obviously a very good thing um, because of uh, changing life conditions, because of medicines, because of health care. Um, and you can see that on, on the page um, which, is, uh, which is shared. Beyond the, this first uh, set of ex explanations, which is a, a demographic shift, there is another one which is, less, um, which is less stress, but which is very potent. It is the fact that there is an increasing share uh, among the years of uh, retired people, especially women, who have a full career and thus have a full pension without any discount. When, um, when our system was created after World War II and until the 19... Uh, uh, 60s or 1970s, a lot of people did not have um, a full career and thus they had uh, discounted pensions. This is less and less the case um, nowadays. And last, and that is uh, also obviously a, a very important factor, um, this is the demise, I would say, of two core of optimistic assumptions, which had induced um, continuous improvements in our pension system until the first half of the 1980s. Um, well, those two core assumptions were first, perpetual high rates of growth, providing each year extra resources for social expenditure and full employment, owing to which all working age people contribute to the financing of the pension system and social security as a whole. Before the first oil shock uh, in 1973, the annual growth rate of five to six percent was commonplace in France. Today, growth rates, um, uh, when there is no recession, um, range between one and two percent per year, which is obviously far less. And since the 1980s, unemployment has seldom been below 8% of the workforce and sometimes um, be above uh, 10%. And the, indeed, the, the, all those three factors um, contribute to, to explain the structural uh, imbalance of, um, of our system. 
I will get to um, the four, um, the, the third uh, part of this uh, lecture, which is what has been done uh, in order to, uh, to rebalance or, or to contain, uh, that would be more, more correct, uh, the structural uh, imbalance of the French pension system. Since the early 1990s, uh, the French pension system has been reformed five times through uh, laws uh, discussed, uh, of course, by parliament or executive orders um, after parliament uh, provided a, a general habilitation to the executive branch of power. In 1993, in 2004, in 2008, in 2012, and in 2014. And as I just mentioned, uh, there was um, the, the incumbent uh, president, Emmanuel Macron, had uh, prepared uh, another reform, but this reform was dropped because of uh, uh, the general context of the COVID um, epidemic. And when I mentioned those, uh, those years, uh, you see that uh, the pace uh, of reform has accelerated uh, over years. Um, these reforms were made by center-right and center-left governments who have alternated in power since uh, the 1980s. Those governments uh, obviously prioritized different instruments uh, according to their uh, political leanings because each instrument of reform does not have uh, the same effect as the other on uh, the situation of um, retired people, on the situation of uh, working age people, or some uh, social, uh, social groupings. Um, beyond those um, very, um, I would say, well-known and um, debated uh, reform, there have also been less noticeable changes, um, which have had also had as, a, as an effect uh, to slow the increase in pensions uh, expenditure. In fact, France's retirement pension system has been going through a continuous process of reform since the early um, 1990s. I have tried, and that is on the following page, I think, um, to, to list um, the different tools uh, that have been uh, used uh, at, several, uh, at several times. Um, I have numbered um, 11, maybe that's not, um, that's not totally comprehensive, but those are the, 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 main, the main ones. Uh, let me explain them. The first is the de-indexation uh, index de of pensions uh, in relation to wages uh, and the indic indexation on prices. Um, that, was, um, that was part of the first reform which occurred in 1993. Um, it has led to uh, a growing discrepancy uh, between the, the amount of uh, individual uh, pensions and the amount of, uh, of, of wages, and it has had very uh, potent uh, financial effects. Um, beyond that, um, there is also, uh, the, the, there has been more recently the de-indexation of pensions uh, in, relations, in relation to prices. Um, as a consequence, uh, some uh, retired people have lost uh, purchasing power, um, which uh, has led to some, um, to some extent, to some, uh, extent to uh, social uh, discontent. Uh, a third uh, tool was uh, to, to switch uh, the calculation of pension uh, from the best 25 years of salaries to uh, from the 10 best years of uh, salaries to the best 25 years of, uh, of, of salaries. Um, this reform also occurred in, in 1993, uh, uh, and it was a, a big change because uh, in 1972, uh, the exact opposite uh, was done, that, that is to, to switch from uh, the best 25 to the best 10. And so there has been a, a reversal, 
uh, which corresponds, uh, in fact, to a, a change uh, in the economic uh, and financial situation of, uh, of, of France. Um, a fourth item uh, has been the indexation of these best 10 years on inflation instead of uh, an indexation on uh, uh, the average uh, salaries. Um, that is also a, a potent tool because um, in general, um, above, apart from some uh, uh, peculiar years, uh, salaries uh, increase more than prices uh, in the long term. Then there is also, there have been uh, other tools uh, regarding the, the, the legal age of retirement and uh, the duration of uh, the, insur the insurance uh, period. Um, the legal age of retirement uh, was uh, lowered uh, in 1981 from 65 uh, to 60. Um, it has been uh, since um, increased uh, from 60 for people born before mid-1951 uh, to 62 for people who were born um, since uh, 1955. And that change occurred in 2011. Um, and it has led uh, to, um, uh, I would say, a hike uh, in the, the savings made in, um, in, our, in our system. Um, a sixth item, um, which has been uh, practiced uh, very early in 1993, but also in 2000 and, and, uh, and four, and again in 2014, has been a, an increase in, of the insurance period, uh, which is required to get a full pension without discount. Um, this insurance period uh, has been uh, increased from 37.5 years for people born in 1933 to 43 years for uh, the people born since uh, 1973. As a result of that change, I will not be able to retire probably uh, before, before I am 67 since I, uh, I enjoyed uh, long studies. But yeah, obviously uh, I fully accept that. Um, a seventh item has been to apply the same legal age, the same insurance periods, and the same methods of indexation of uh, pensions to all workers including uh, civil, civil servants and uh, employees of uh, public uh, utilities. Uh, indeed, um, one of the difficulties in um, changing, uh, in reforming our, um, our pension system is that um, for public utilities, uh, that is the, the railways, the Parisian uh, uh, metro, um, uh, the electricity sector uh, apply specific schemes, very generous uh, in nature, um, which uh, were created, which were often created uh, before 1945 with um, very outlandish um, demographic expectations um, on the workforce, expectations of uh, the demographic trend of the workforce of those uh, sectors. And this, um, this workforce uh, has, has, uh, has decreased, uh, in fact, uh, uh, very steadily since uh, the 1990s. As, and as a result, um, the French uh, state uh, has been uh, compelled uh, to finance uh, the deficit of these, um, of these schemes. Um, to subsidize them more and more uh, heavily uh, at the expense, of course, of uh, other public expenditures or lower taxation. Um, another item um, is uh, a, a tightening of exemptions 
from the legal age of the entrance period. Uh, historically, uh, the legal age and the entrance period have a lot of exemptions. Um, these exemptions can be uh, uh, general. Um, for instance, if um, I have uh, a disability um, uh, pension, um, I may go. I may be retired um, with a full pension at the legal age, even though I do not have uh, the total insurance uh, period for a full uh, for a full um, pension. Um, if I'm if I'm uh, disabled, then there is there is a, an, a, an exception. Uh, other exceptions uh, apply to uh, the schemes for civil servants. Uh, and employees at public utilities, one, one again. And the, the, the tightening of those exemptions um, was negotiating with their trade unions and um, had to, some trade-offs were necessary with pay raises. So um, during the first uh, years, of this change, it could not be said that uh, savings were, were made. It, were, it was more uh, like um, increase, further increases uh, in public expenditures. Uh, the savings will, will come uh, during the, the coming decades. A ninth item uh, is a tightening of the public salary policy and an increase of salary bonuses uh, within the overall pay of, uh, of civil, civil servants. Um, indeed, for civil servants, salary bon bonuses um, do not count for uh, the pensions of the first uh, tier uh, system. They are not uh, taken into um, account. Uh, only uh, the, the statutory uh, salary is taken into account. So, in terms of um, policy, if uh, the share of the bonuses uh, increases uh, towards the share of the uh, statutory pay, then pensions will be, uh, will be lower. Another, um, that is the 10th um, item, the 10th uh, tool uh, which has been used is uh, increases in social contributions Levied on pension. Um, this is a sort of a backdoor policy because it does not reduce as such uh, the amount of the uh, pension. It does not change uh, the conditions to, to benefit uh, of a pension. However, it's very effective uh, in terms of uh, uh, public finances. Uh, to, to reduce uh, the burden of the financial burden of, uh, of pensions. Uh, the net expenditure is lower than uh, before those uh, social contributions were instituted. Um, an eleventh um, tool is a change uh, in the underlying, um, in the professional status, uh, which underlies. Um, some uh, pension uh, schemes. This is what is happening uh, for the railways. When they retire, new recruits uh, will enjoy the same pensions as ordinary employees and no longer um, the higher pensions that their uh, colleagues um, with, who are under a special status uh, have um, a special professional status uh, have enjoyed. Of course, the effects of uh, such, uh, uh, such a change uh, will be felt only in the, in the long terms. So what I would like to, uh, to stress after um, uh, sketching out those um, 11 um, tools uh, of, um, of change, uh, tools for uh, reducing um, the expenditure uh, related to uh, pensions, uh, is that um, those tools um, have been, uh, well, each tool, of course, has its own uh, singularity, but combined together, they have had a very uh, effective, uh, effective uh, effort.
effects. And that is where I'm getting to at uh, the fourth part of this, uh, uh, this uh, lecture. Um, the reforms which have been um, made have had considerable effects on uh, expenditure. Um, if they had not occurred, it is assessed that retirement pensions would now stand at more than 18% of GDP uh, at, and at 20% in 2030, whereas they are more or less uh, capped around 14% of, uh, of GDP. Um, so far, the most potent um, factors of um, uh, savings have been um, uh, come from uh, the indexation of pensions on inflation rather than wages and the, the indexation of the best year on inflation rather than the average uh, salaries. And some of uh, the, the effects I have described um, has still to unfold depending on the renewal of uh, the generations of uh, pensioners. Um, the average pension is thus forecasted to decline from 50% of uh, the average earned inc income at present to between 41 and 44% in 2040. However, it is um, quite um, obvious that uh, further adjustments uh, will be needed. Indeed, the ratio of uh, working people to one uh, retired person uh, has gone from 2.1 at the start of the uh, 2000, um, 2.1 at uh, year 2000 to 1.7 today. And it might be uh, only 1.5 in 2004. Um, moreover, I would say that uh, France has been recently uh, beset by a sharp decline in, um, in birth. Um, and this will have uh, obvious consequences uh, in, the, in the long term. Um, the pension, based upon some estimates, uh, the pension, our pension system may incur deficits uh, totaling uh, 0.5 to 1% of uh, GDP during the next decade. So as a, as a result, uh, further action is needed uh, in order to, um, uh, to, to, to reduce uh, the increase uh, in, in expenditure. Knowing also that uh, the room for further increases in contribution rates is limited since, since France already has the highest rate of contribution in the European um, Union. And there is also another issue, uh, which is that of the, uh, the cost uh, of the health uh, system and uh, uh, the cost of care homes. Uh, these, cost, these costs are increasing fast. Um, and it may be necessary to have uh, uh, another pension uh, reform in order to offset uh, those uh, uh, increasing costs and not only to balance uh, the, the pension uh, system. Uh, there are three uh, main tools um, which might be considered. The first one would be to, to raise uh, the legal retirement uh, age uh, this proposal is very much on the, um, on the table, uh, given the fact that uh, France still has um, a lower uh, legal retirement age than most uh, OECD and uh, European Union uh, countries. Um, however, um, they are, uh, this, that kind of measure uh, also has uh, drawbacks. First, uh, the first one is that um, pushing back the retirement age does not imply as such that uh, all people will go on working and contribute financially uh, to the pension system until they're retired. Um, on average, between the age of 58 and 61, around 30% of men and women are either are neither uh, employed or retired, but unemployed or disabled. 
And as a result, uh, social benefits are, are fed to, to, to them. Um, and it is assessed that um, uh, when the, the, the legal age of retirement was um, raised from uh, the age of 60 to the age of uh, 62, um, around 20% uh, of uh, savings uh, were offset uh, by increases of uh, other uh, social uh, expenditure. And from a human standpoint, uh, obviously, uh, it is not a satisfactory situation that uh, uh, people are, are left in uh, limbo uh, between, um, between uh, former job and um, uh, a retirement uh, pension. So, uh, uh, in fact, uh, a further rise uh, of uh, uh, the legal um, retirement age um, would need uh, broader changes, uh, broader changes in terms of um, enhancing the skills of the workforce during its lifetime so that to avoid uh, unemployment when they reach uh, the late uh, 50s or early 60s, improve second, improve working conditions for aging people in order to make work less burdensome and tiring uh, and it should be noted that in terms of public policy so far, little has been done uh, in, that, uh, in that respect. Uh, and um, employers have been uh, quite uh, sh shy uh, to, uh, to address this, uh, this issue. Um, the third would be to enhance the schemes uh, that make it possible to combine um, uh, a part-time work, a part-time job, uh, and um, a, a retirement pension and retire in a progressive uh, manner. Um, nowadays, those schemes uh, are used only by a handful of people because they are not um, financially attractive enough. And the fourth, and it is also very uh, relevant, is to improve uh, the prevention of chronic diseases, uh, be they physiological or mental. Uh, these diseases have uh, disproportionate, disproportionate effects on uh, aging people uh, at, uh, at work. And they make a lot of people uh, drop from uh, their, their, their jobs in, in effect. Uh, a second um, major tool uh, would be to tighten more firmly exemptions from the legal age or the insurance period. Um, in uh, 2017, almost... 50% uh, of um, the new uh, retirees um, went um, at an early age, that is uh, before uh, the age of, um, of 60 or, or, or 62, depending upon their, uh, the year that, that they were born. Uh, since then, this proportion has decreased. However, uh, there remains uh, a lot of exemptions, especially in the public sector, for what we call um, active, active job categories, which um, allow uh, an early retirement uh, by five years, like that is the case for nursing assistants, professional firefighters, or even 10 years for uh, police officers, uh, sewer workers, um, other um, early retirement um, schemes applied to, to the military force. And all this has um, an obvious uh, uh, cost. Um, a third and last uh, tool might be to introduce some kind of uh, um, automatic adjustment uh, for some um, parameters, parameters of, uh, of pension um, to, be, to, be more, uh, to be more precise. I would say that um, some ideas have been put forward um, in order to, to make uh, the systems, the system, uh, the pension system, rebalance uh, in an automatic way by reducing uh, the amount of uh, pensions or increasing uh, the insurance uh, period uh, if an imbalance is uh, forecasted or um, are, are assessed. Um, 
all measures, um, those tools are the tools for action um, um, are very numerous. Uh, most have been used already, but others have to be uh, uh, devised, obviously. Uh, it is also, uh, it also matters uh, as I have, uh, uh, as I have underlined, to take into account uh, social needs, um, not only the, the financial side, but also social need, um, especially of inclusion uh, in work. Um, the essential, it's also essential to devise uh, those, uh, those reforms um, in a manner uh, which brings more equity um, or more e equality, that is one of the, um, that is in the motto of, um, of the French Republic, uh, liberté, uh, égalité, fraternité. Um, égalité or equality does not exist enough in our pension system. Uh, there are still too many privileges and uh, privileges which um, have to be, uh, uh, to be reduced um, over time in order to have a, a system which is more understandable, uh, fairer, uh, and also uh, more balanced from a financial standpoint. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. This is a foreign, amazing lecture. It was very enlightening and very detailed. Um, so now we will move to the question and uh, and answer this uh, super segment. Um, uh, uh, we have a a, a question here that says uh, uh, regarding the uh, the uh, the uh, the average ratio of of very iris um would there be an in the in of lowering birth rates yes yes for the um uh, for the coming years i would say that is not very much the uh, the case right now, but um, this effect will uh, increase over time. Of course, right. uh, it could be this effect could be mitigated by uh, uh, higher uh, immigration. And how do we? Uh, 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 offset uh, uh, raising uh, 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 immigration costs? Well, um, I would not say that, uh, well, immigration has, uh, has costs, as um, everything has some, some costs, but uh, uh, in, in the long run, uh, immigration has been very beneficial um, for, for France, as you may have uh, seen my name. Uh, my family was uh, originated from uh, Italy. Uh, there have been, there has been tremendous migration from uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal, um, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, other countries. 
um, and and it has uh, changed uh, the, the the shape uh, and the wealth of uh, of France. Not everybody recognizes that, but um, this is. Uh, uh, this is what uh, history and also uh, economics teach us. Of course, yes, sir. Uh, what, what matters? What matters? Obviously, um, is not only. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, migration right now, but um, uh, I'm talking about the workforce in general. Uh, what matters is is skills, really, um, because um, our uh, system would be um, more balanced. Our social system in general would be more balanced uh, if uh, there was less unemployment and if uh, the effective participation of people ranging from uh, 20 or 22, uh, 22 25 to uh, uh, to 62 65 uh, was higher because um, they would have a, a proper they would have a proper job uh, which is not, uh, which is not uh, the case as, as as I mentioned from uh, uh, aging workers. Th th there is um, uh, there is a very high stake uh, in increasing uh, the participation uh, in work of uh, aging workers, and not only pushing back uh, the retirement uh, legal age, but making sure that. Uh, a higher proportion of aging people has indeed a, a, a job and uh, contributes to contribute to the system. Thank you, sir. I, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. Um, yeah, apologies. Uh, we'd like to continue the question segment by raising this question to you. Um, how do we maintain a sustainable and livable pension share with a growing number of pensioners? Is raising the retirement age a viable policy option? I think it is, it is a viable policy option um, only uh, if you make it possible for a higher, a greater proportion of uh, uh, aging people to, to work. Um, it's not impossible. That is what um, Scandinavian countries are, are doing. Um, um, speaking there of uh, countries like Finland or, or, or Sweden, um, for which they have high um, legal uh, retirement age, but they also have had um, negotiations at uh, uh, sector, at industry and uh, uh, at um, company level in order to, uh, to make it possible for aging people to go on working. Um, obviously, when, when you're uh, 62 or 64, you cannot perform uh, the same physical tasks as you, as you would do uh, if you are 50, 40, or, or 30. That is, a, that is a major challenge, and it is an issue which has not been addressed uh, so far by um, employees and trade unions, and I must say, uh, the, the, the French state itself. And uh, a, lot has to be, a lot has to be done in this respect. Furthermore, um, another question is, can there be a unified pension scheme that encompasses all pensioners in a relatively small population? Or would a tiered scheme system be, be viable? What kinds of challenges do a multi-layered scheme system pose in terms of organization and administration? <laughs> Well, <laughs> the administration of a multi-layer and um, with a lot of uh, schemes and, and sub-schemes, um, <laughs> it poses a, a, a lot of challenges in terms of administration, uh, even though um, there have also been, um, there have been decisions in order to, to simplify things um, for people. Uh, for instance, um, if you have had a career 
uh, under different schemes, you do not have now, uh, this is very recent, uh, to ask for a pension to each scheme. You only um, ask a pension to uh, the, the last scheme you, you're, you're in, and this scheme will do the necessary uh, administrative work uh, with others. Um, and, and, and as a result, uh, you do, because we have a, a lot of people um, whose career has been under different schemes. For instance, uh, people who have started as farmers and who have then become workers um, or people who have been um, first employees and then civil servants or, or, or the opposites and or the opposite. And historically speaking, uh, people had to ask um, their um, retirement pension to um, the exact number of regimes uh, they'd been um, into. And it was very burdensome um, and also difficult to, 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 to understand. Um, I think that the, the very existence of a, a two-tier system in itself um, has more advantages than drawbacks because um, it makes it possible first uh, to preserve a, a, sphere, a sphere of decision for, um, from, uh, for employees, um, for uh, the employers, for self-employed people, for their representatives, in fact, um, in which um, the, the state decisions, which uh, the, st the French state supervises, but is not directly involved into, um, then they, they have some kind of autonomy and um, they, they are more responsible than if everything was under uh, a single state umbrella. I think that was one of the drawbacks uh, of, the, of the system which was uh, uh, devised and dropped, as I mentioned, just before the, at, at the time of the, at the time of the COVID crisis. I think it's not a wrong thing to have uh, different spheres uh, of, of, of decision. Um, the, the, the major difficulty I think is in the first tier now. Um, and uh, this difficulty stems from um, uh, the very different situations of uh, civil servants, civil servants as compared uh, to employees, um, because civil servants do not have their proper fund and the, the contribution of the, uh, the French state to the financing of their pensions uh, is, is, not, um, is not distinct, it's not identified. And so that does not provide responsibility um, in, uh, that does not induce responsibility um, does not uh, induce adjustments uh, in the parameters of their uh, of their pensions which is uh, which is quite unfortunate there have been plans uh, for that uh, but they, they, they met a very stiff resistance from um, trade unions of civil servants and so they were uh, they were dropped um, but I think this, this issue is very much there uh, and it will have to be uh, considered. Uh, but all aspects will have to be considered there. Um, that is uh, the whole social contract because historically speaking for a lot of civil servants, uh, not all, there, have been, uh, there has been a, a trade-off between a, a relatively modest pay when during the, uh, their working uh, age um, and an early retirement age. And it is this trade-off which is no longer uh, sustainable. It has been revised already for uh, uh, some categories, for instance, teachers. Historically, uh, teachers in uh, preschools and primary schools uh, could go as early as uh, 55. That was, uh, these people were um, 
mostly women that, that is that is very early uh, and it has been uh, this uh, peculiar uh, advantage uh, has been uh, progressively suppressed um, but with um, uh, for that to happen uh, the French uh, state has had to increase uh, the the pay because the social con the social contract the underlying social contract the trade-off was different so, sorry uh, a second advantage of the second tier uh, system is that um, it has uh, financial reserves um, nothing uh, like uh, uh, the Norwegian uh, state fund or um, very rich countries uh, funds but however there are some there are some reserves um, which make it possible to uh, uh, compensate uh, deficits uh, and and also to mitigate transition costs when when uh, reforms are made whereas uh, for the first tier we do not have any any reserves and the, the first tier is the is the biggest uh, amongst the two Thank you very much, sir. It was a very informative, very um, insightful presentation, and I thank you very, very much. Um, if you don't mind, and I also ask from uh, from our the guests on audience if they'd like to partake in uh, a group picture. Um, whoever would like to, please turn your cameras on and. Um, yeah, just smile, I guess. Yeah. All right, just one minute, please. Uh, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thank you very kindly. It was a great time. Um, it was our delight and pleasure as part of the KPPC team to welcome you and um, Thank you very much for an insightful look at the French pension system. It was lovely uh, meeting you and it was great listening to you um, speak about invaluable, uh, about your invaluable experience within that system. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, it was also a, a pleasure on my part. And uh, of course, uh, I will answer any written question uh, which may arise uh, after this. Uh, uh, this meeting. Um, sorry, I am not that used to speaking in English. I did my, I did my best. It's not my my working language. Uh, amazing, sir. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> good, good. Um, well, but um, I am at your disposal in order to uh, answer other questions or provide uh, uh, other information if that is uh, if that is your wish. And once again, I was very honored to speak. Uh, um, before uh, KPPC, and um, I wish you a very uh, pleasant uh, evening, I guess. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and may you all have a great night. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.